Harbor Finance Committee to order on March 28, 2022. It's a joint session tonight with the out capital outlay. Can we please rise for the pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. <coughs> Beth, if you'd like to call your committee to order. Sure, I'd like to call to I would like to call to order the Town of Carver Capital Outlay Committee. Today is March 28th, and it is 6.30 p.m. Excellent. Thank you. Meetings being recorded by Area 58. Thank you, as always. Is there any public comment? Seeing none. Town Administrator Finance Director Update. <laughs> Mr. Fennessy. Hello, everybody. It's all happy. He's got an update for us. I got an update. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long one, though. Okay. Good. So first, I want to let everybody know that the town report is in, the annual town report. And the picture depicts the police station on the front and back pages. So, so if you want to pick up a copy, let me know. They're in the, they're in the select board's office. Um, the... Just an update on negotiations. Uh, we're currently in negotiations with three collective bargaining unions, uh, units that uh, all expire on June 30th of this year. So hopefully, we're, we're pretty close on two of them to settling them, and hopefully the third one we can get on board before town meeting. So we'll be able to hopefully bring those to town meeting and get the funding for the, the differences. So those are moving forward. Um, I want to have a reminder that the Redevelopment Authority is meeting tomorrow night, right here in meeting room one, and they're going to discuss the North Carver project on their, on their uh, agenda, and that begins at 6 o'clock in here tomorrow. Planning Board is going to hold a joint meeting with the Redevelopment Authority on Wednesday and Thursday nights. Thursday is kind of the secondary night if, if needed. But it will start on Wednesday, and it's going to be at the cafeteria at the middle school. And those are starting at 7 o'clock p.m. And last but not least, the next board meeting for the Board of Selectmen is actually a joint meeting with uh, FinCom, and that's April 5th. And then, obviously, town meeting is April 12th. So we're moving forward, getting the warrant finalized and prepared for printing uh, once we get all the final figures. So, so that's my report. Thank you. Excellent. You're welcome. Um, Sue, item is discussions of questions that were asked by Adam Holmes of the ITA and the finance director via email. Everybody has a copy of that email chain and um, Sue's response to it. So uh, since Adam was asking the questions, I'll give it to you. I don't have anything to add. No comments what she sent you? You're okay with everything she you, that she sent? Um, no, but I figure we'll get into that as a committee at some point during the meeting, right? We're going to discuss the capital situation. We're going to discuss the free cash, and we can sort of talk about it at that time. You have anything you want to add? Okay. Discussion of the DOR correspondence. You want to bring us up to speed on that, please? Either Bob or Sue. So in um, certifying our free cash, it was determined that there Speaking is Speaking of the mic, Sue, so, so we can hear you. It was determined that there is a, um, a fund called Solar Net Metering Fund that's established. And they um, said that under 4453 that those funds shouldn't have their own revolving fund. It needs to be part the revenue needs to be part of a general fund. So that revenue needs to be shifted into the general fund, and we have to make up for the expenses um, for net metering that we pay out of that fund for the last five years. Uh, so whatever's left in there needs to be closed out to the general fund, and then we need to make sure that we're accounting for that revenue um, in the general fund and also increasing the utilities uh, budget by about $450,000 to pay for the net metering. Can I ask a question? <clears throat> the 
you have a copy of the email? <coughs> Take one. Thank you. Thanks. I'm glad that John Carter's in the room. John, do you remember when this thing started? This was, if it's five years ago, was that your last year on or? My last year. 17? Yeah, 17, 18. But I remember the, the whole net solo meeting credit. Uh, but I thought it was being recorded correctly back then. Um, I wasn't aware that it would be broken out separately. I don't recall that. Okay, well, apparently DOR, in a very polite way, is sitting back saying, unfortunately, this means the segregation of this revenue is unlawful. That, that, that's a freaky word. It's not like, you know, wrong or incorrect. Or, uh, according to 44.53, this money belongs in the general fund. Please talk to your team and create a plan to close this out by June 30th. So I'm assuming that we are doing exactly that. Correct. So, so gonna it's, it's going to kind of be, we're getting more revenue on the net metering than we were expending out. So it's actually going to be a good thing for the general fund side of revenues. Um, so we have uh, $604,000 sitting in there right now that also needs to get closed out to the general fund, which will have to be recertified with free cash next year. So the 604 will get recertified next year, but that will zero out this account, mm -hmm. make DOR happy. And then we start putting the revenues in general fund and the expenditures in general fund Are as we well. Are going to give that its own line item? Are we going to call that other... <laughs> we can we can call it other professional services no, for no, net for net metering. <laughs> let's, let's give yeah. it a name. So, so we yeah, know so it, it could is. be it, it's just like utilities. So instead of utilities, it's just a net metering account or gas account or anything like that. But it, it, on average, in the last uh, since 2017, we've spent about four hundred fifty thousand dollars in just net metering cost out of that. And you, you know how much we've taken in? We take in about six hundred thousand a year. A year, so yeah. we've taken in, and we're spending. Uh, so far, we've spent three seventy-five this year, um, but it's an average of four fifty a year. Okay. And this goes back to seventeen, two thousand seventeen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I guess I'm going to ask the question that maybe some people are thinking: um, auditors would have never caught this because things balanced. Is that correct? correct? That and, and Unless they drilled down looking for it. Right. Or it was brought to their attention. How did this get exposed? It was just part of my, all the reporting that I sent to the DOR, and it literally, the, the account name is Solar Net Metering Fund, and she asked what it was for. Her, her boss wanted to know what it was for, and um, I, I explained it to her, and you're not supposed to put net metering cost into a, its own fund. If it was, if it was, you're getting the money in and you're spending the money right out and it's an, you can put it in an agency account and it zeroes out every, every month, mm -hmm. but it doesn't, it's collecting extra money that should be belong to the general fund. Yeah. So is this, is this just something that we've got to do moving forward? Correct. So Excuse me a second. Walter, can you give Pat the microphone? And, and Tony, can you give Walter your Thank you. So is, is this just, Thank you. again, very, very simplistically taking the, taking the funds and instead of putting in this account, putting it over into this account? Mm -hmm. And then is the, um, the previous years basically going to be held harmless? Yes. Okay. So it's really... It's really not a huge issue. No, not going, not so knowing just, that we know that there's an issue, okay. we can fix it. It's a, okay, we didn't know that. 
Correct. And we'll, we'll, we're going to uh, correct it going forward. Correct. Yeah. I've, I've been there before. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. I just have a question on the geography of it on the financial statements. So is it going from one revenue account to another one? Correct. And then, in the, I just want to make sure I understand this. So in the past, were we netting down the revenue account by the expenses, and now we're going to list the expense in the expense side? Right. Okay. Thank you. I just wanted to make sure I understood what we were doing. But the excess will wind up being in the general revenue, so it'll end up going, the excess will end up in free cash, unlike it does now, where it sits off in mm -hmm. this other account it's all right. in the closet. So was it sweeping to the balance sheet, yeah. the excess revenue before? Mm -hmm. Just not where it's supposed to be on the balance sheet. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Your turn. Capital outlay. Okay. The real reason we're here tonight. So, it took us a while to get here, but we finally did. So I just wanted to introduce everyone I have here tonight. Um, my name is Beth Sauger. I'm the chairman of Capital Outlay. Marie Wegman, vice chairman of Capital Outlay, and. Um, Jim Hoffman, member of Capital Outlay from the Select Board. Andy Cotterelli cannot be here tonight, um, but he knows that we're meeting. So I did give everybody two sheets, and Shelby also left for everybody the famous sheet that we use, sorry, all the time, the really big one, in case you want to look at that. I have extras, John. You want them? Yeah. You want them? John, there's more right there, too. We have, we have extras. Yeah. Shelby was gracious enough to... Yes, she was. I know to thank Shelby for doing all the photocopying. So we met um, on March 16th as a capital outlay to go over everything again. And at that point, um, free cash had been certified. There were still some articles open that hadn't been closed out, but we were pretty close at that point when we met. So when we met that night, we, we decided we had five options basically to look at. For capital and we narrowed it down to the one that we felt would be the best for our town so we went with an option um, where we could do all of the things that we needed to do this year um, however still push the brush breaker out to 2024 with that we had looked at short-term borrowing not bonding but short-term borrowing for the HVAC at the library that is after we also met with John, I'm sorry, Dave Seed and Talk that night, looks like that project may come in at a million eight and not a million six. So when we talk about that, it may be higher. So what we were looking at um, that night, and now this is what we approved as a, a committee, was to be able to short-term borrow for the, um, the full million eight. When we do that, Sue's reached out already. It would be an interest rate of 2.5%. <clears throat> Um, and we would only pay the interest until the project is done. So we have earmarked the, um, this sheet says a million, but it's actually not, it's going to be 960,000 that we've earmarked only for the library HVAC. So that's sitting there with hopes when we do the 2024 budget, we'll earmark the rest of this project. So the other 840,000 with the short term borrowing we can pay off the note um, early. We don't have to wait the full term of the note that we choose. And we should at this time have all the money set aside to pay it off. However, we will be paying interest on the million eight. Two and a half percent? Two and a half percent. percent. Um, I don't know if I have to. <laughs> you... Yeah. <clears throat> So, so that's what we were look. That's what we're looking at, and that's what we've approved, and we're bringing to you guys to recommend to the select board tonight. Do you guys have any comments on anything? Okay. Yeah. So, like we had said the last time, we were ma majorly concerned about the um, bonding not to get approved. So we tried to come up with a better <laughs> idea. When we saw how much free cash was there, um, like. Beth said the 960,000. We're going to earmark that for the for this year, and then mm -hmm. next year hopefully we'll be able to do that as well. Um, one of the things we also talked about is the uh, good old wish list that everybody has. I think next year we have to ask all the departments to really take a hard look at that. That some things will probably have to get pushed off, um, but that's just you know we thought the priority was the library, 
I think we've all agreed it's been put off long enough. Some of the other projects that are scheduled for 20, fiscal 24 and 25, maybe those can get pushed off another year or two. But um, I think the board or the committee, we've, and I'm sure you guys will agree too, that the library, I think, was a priority. Because um, that's not going to get any better. We, we all assume that that was the, just the upper level, the heat, but it's really 14 or 11 of the ducts or yeah. the systems weren't working properly. And it just wasn't going to last them that much longer. So. Yeah. Um, it's a lot more than just the second floor. It's, right. It's a whole uh, but but that's, that's what most people thought. So it's kind of easy just to push it off. And I think once we got all the facts, we just put that at the top of the priority list. So. Yeah. Um, and it's also going to be the HVAC for the AC. At the same time, the heating system is 25 years old, and that will also be replaced because it's going to need to be replaced as well. So it's both of those projects together. Yeah, it's entire, complete. Re in fact, I think that Dave said, um, I'm sorry. You know, go ahead. Uh, I think that Dave said that um, they're going to use some of the existing ductwork because now municipalities have to take in outside air. They have to have makeup air come in from outside. So they run that through <clears throat> a preliminary heat exchanger, which is actually the new technology, is some of the exhausting temperatures warm the incoming air preheat it and then run it through the heating system. So they're going to use some of that ductwork to accomplish that. But the rest of the system is going to be all modular units, all accessible, all repairable, all replaceable, one at a time if need be and stuff. So going forward, we'll never again see this kind of a fiasco is, is of course, what the hope is. So yeah. I appreciate the hard work you guys did. I really do. I think this is, this is exactly what we promised last year at town meeting. I think that we owe it to the town. I think it's been too many years that the, the system's been getting promised to be done and we kept kicking the can. Um, and, and this committee went to town meeting last year and asked for $50,000 to do an engineering study with the caveat that if you give us this money, we'll come back next year and we'll fix the heating system and the AC system. And I think that it just would, ne it would, it would never have been acceptable to say, well, you know, we're going to kick the can another couple of years down the road. I think it would have been terrible as well as attack the credibility of the Finance Committee. We'd have made a, a commitment to something we didn't follow through on. So. Anyone? Tony? Pat. <laughs> well, I would just like to compliment the Capital Outlay Committee on their hard work in coming up with a great plan that deals with, um, you know, accomplishing a lot of things, plus the library, which, again, as Jim said, we all thought was, was very important. But I'll also go back, you know, I can go way back, but, you know, n number of years, multiple times over, over the years um, have we <clears throat> done some borrowing. And it's strategic borrowing, it's smart borrowing, and a lot of times you, you, you need to do that to accomplish to accomplish your goals, just like anyone, just like in your own household. You know, you borrow money, you buy a house, you buy a car. It's like I tell my kids, debt's a killer, and don't go too far into debt, and, and, and we're not. And it's always worked out, and I don't really care whether it's borrowing or bonding. When you do it strategically, you're mm -hmm. able to accomplish the goals. And what we're here for, whether we're on these committees or, you know, uh, employees of the town and so forth, is to provide the residents the best possible services that we can. And I think this does it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. I uh, didn't understand what you originally said sure. about, so we're looking at option four here with the star on it. Yes. So at the bottom it says uh, library HVAC a million dollars. It does. Yes. Yeah, so um, it has been tweaked a little. This was last week. If you look at the, the new sheet, this is the final one that's on the warrant. This is the one. This, this one? is, this okay. is yeah. that plan. So it's 960. It's 960 on the warrant. There, there was, so we, they closed out some articles and we were able to, to be able to put 960 away. So 960 is, 
is what it costs, or is it 960? Is that, that's sort of just like what we're going to put away it's in our in savings account. Yeah, like in the savings okay. account. So it's going to be called capital stabilization. So we, we got a we got an estimate for a million eight, roughly. Well, it's a million six is the estimate. Okay. Um, Dave was reaching back out because that's, I believe, quite a few months old now, so it could be yeah. up to a million it's eight. In the one point seven ish. Yeah. So. Kind of just round it up to one point eight to be it safe. And, and the uh, the idea is that we'll sign that if if it, everything passes, we'll sign that contract with that contract there. And it'll stay a million eight; it won't change. No, no. Once it's locked into a number, it's locked right, into it's a number. Lock, it's not going to linger on. And then we're going to borrow for the rest. So the the, the nine sixty minus. We're actually going to borrow all of it. Okay. And then it, you'll make a interest payment while we're okay. doing the reno, and then as soon as it's completed. Then either we'll take the debt on as a normal debt, or we'll write it down by the 960. By then, it'll be next year, so we'll have an idea on what's coming in for free cash next year. Also, it may very well be that we'll have enough money just to yeah. pay it off. But we have several options, depending upon which way, if anything goes south or sideways, um, we still have options. And we're going to stop paying the interest with that 960 that's put away, or something different. No, we'll just st start paying it out of the capital of debt stabilization. Okay. Right. And we'll have the 960 sitting there. That'll be there okay. And we would have the option, do we want to just pay that down right away and keep paying the rest short-term borrowing? Or do we have enough from FY24 and FY23 to just pay the whole project off? Mm -hmm. but then, and when you, when you get the million eight, mm -hmm. is that gonna, are you going to get a lump sum or are you going to get progress payments as the project uh, progresses? I don't know. I'd much rather see progress payments. So, f first of all, if you wanted to use that 960 before even going out to borrow, the, the borrowing is just an authorization, so the bank's just going to sit there and hold on to it until yeah. we're ready for it. So, yeah, yeah it would be progress payments. Right. And if you right. wanted to use the 960 as we were going along throughout the project, and then let's say at the end of FY23, there's six months to go and they're still working on the project and they need another 400,000. We don't, we don't have to borrow right. the whole amount. Right. We can borrow 400,000 mm -hmm. and then pay that off with the following year's capital. Good. So there's, there's a couple of different options. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, the goal was to, to earmark this 960 for that project, not to say we'll put it in the general fund and then maybe we'll use it. We, we said, no, let's earmark that. So it's well, definitely going to be get, yeah. get done. And Sorry. frankly, this no, is an no, awful perfect. lot um, in FY24's capital plan that may not take place. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And then if you looked at the, the final sheet, the one that's going to be in the warrant, there is still remaining money in capital of 123000 mm -hmm. So again, that would probably go back to free cash next year if we don't spend it. It's actually just going into your stabilization fund. Okay. Anybody else? I've got questions, but I, I think it's related to the larger issue of what's available and <clears throat> the future of capital specifically. So I, I don't know that it's relevant to this part of the discussion so much as I, I don't know when the appropriate time would be to talk about it. So. Well, it's in Capital Outlay Committee report, so. So a couple things. Number one, um, so we, do we have a sense of what the payments look like on, let's just say we pay the 960, what the <coughs> payment would be on the 840 if we weren't able to pull capital or free cash, like what that annual payment would look like? Because it's going to reduce know. the of cash that's available on an annual basis by that payment. It will. And if it's 800,000, 840,000 over a five-year time frame, it's going to be in the ballpark of 200,000, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm looking at here for FY24 you know, is, do, do you know if you included that in the fixed capital stabilization expenses? I noticed it jumped up by about a little over 200000 Yes. Okay. So that, that was added in there as part of the, the, the increase in the existing debt for fire and library HVAC. Correct. So what that does is it leaves us next year with a delta of $3.1 million <laughs> before through cash. Um, so what this what is this year essentially a deficit of seven hundred thousand dollars, the eight forty minus the one twenty three that's left over. Mm -hmm. 
so a little over 700,000. Next year will be a deficit of a million dollars. Yep. We, we do think, though, that a lot of projects on here are not going to happen next year. Well, we're not going to buy a million dollar fire truck. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's the first thing that's coming off the FY24 list. And we're not going to rehab two brush burgers. Because you push them one forward mm -hmm. to next year, and then there's a second one in for next year, for, the, for next year also. So there's a, there's a tremendous amount of money on the FY24 capital plan that when reality hits, it's not going to happen. So that's, that's sort of what we were thinking. And with the North Carter Water, I'm sorry, the project happening, you know, that might happen up there. Will some of these get paid off through there, like the fire truck? You know, we're back with two school buses again next year. Yeah, it's just, I, I, you know, I, I don't, when I'm looking at this, right, I, and maybe I'm different than everybody else, but I'm not looking at just FY23. I'm looking at the full 10-year capital plan and saying to myself, what, what's the impact of a decision like this over the next five years? And, you know, if we've got this stuff sort of forecasted for FY24 and it's not happening, then I would, it begs the question, why would we have it forecasted? Um, you know, the number on here for, for the mechanical, for instance, for the library replacement is only 500. That's going to be more like 250,000 higher. Yep. Um, you know, things like that. It's just, I see this sort of as a short-term fix um, and not really a long-term plan. That's my personal opinion uh, and, and why I'm concerned about the short-term borrowing. It's, it's just not, we're solving a problem this year and putting a Band-Aid on it and we're going to be in the same exact situation, if not worse, next year, unless we have unprecedented free cash. Uh, this year, in my opinion, is unprecedented free cash. We've never had free cash as high as it was this year. Uh, so I, I'm not expecting that next year. Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll happen again. But I think we're going to be in a, in a similar dire situation next year, and it's just concerning. Even if you take the million dollars off of the tower truck, it's still only a $2 million deficit as opposed to a $3 million deficit. So, you know, those are my concerns, and um, you know, with respect to cash, like capital that's available, um, there's one of the one of the items that we highlighted for cash to be available was from the the return of funds from the articles, mm -hmm. right? Of four hundred and thirteen thousand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Is that something we can use right away, or do we have to recertify it as free cash and or reallocate it via a vote? At it's, it's in part of the capital article um, to reallocate it to those capital, to the capital. So it's actually going to happen for your projects this year. Under Article 4, the second paragraph states all the articles that we're going to be closing out to use to help fund this project, okay. this capital plan. Okay. <clears throat> Awful lot of money hanging around these accounts, FY14, FY19, FY18, FY17. Okay. That, that would, those, are, those are my concerns. I mean, I, you know, I... Ask the questions I asked with that stuff in mind to better understand our current situation and what's available and what's going to be available in the future. And I, you know, I think I shared my opinion earlier at a previous meeting about borrowing money for these types of projects, and I, I just don't, I don't think it's changed based on our well, circumstances. And I have to ask you the same question. Go down this list and tell me who you want to cut out. You want to, what do you want to take the money from? Because we have no choice. We promised the library. So how do we do it? I'm, I'm asking you. You you don't want to go into debt. I understand that. So now where are we going to pick the money up to do the library? Who do you want to call up on the phone here and say you can't have it? I'm not trying to be difficult. We promised this town the library HVAC last year when we asked them for $50,000. Yeah, so I don't know where that, I don't, you, it's a creative choice of words, but I never promised anybody anything. My, me personally, I didn't. The FinCom um, did. I didn't take a vote that said we were going to replace the HVAC system this year. And I'm not saying the HVAC system, HVAC system shouldn't happen. I just look at a deficit of, um, you know, $700,000 and say there are ways to make up the $700,000, right? We, we asked North Cabo Water District to come in tonight to talk to us. That's roughly $200,000. Um, you know, th there's, there's ways to come up with the money. The same way we had to come up with money last year and had to go tell a few folks, I'm sorry, we can't do this right now. We'll have to do it later. 
Um, I know those conversations are and not. One of those conversations was for the fifty thousand dollars to do the study on on, on the the um, on the library. Simple. Yeah, I know those conversations aren't easy to have because I've had them. Um, you had I was with you when we spoke to Chief Weston, and I went and had the conversation with um, Superintendent right. Neath. So they're they're not easy conversations to have. I've done them myself, but. When you have a budget and money to live off of, it's more financially prudent, in my opinion, to live off that budget. And I just don't see relief coming in the next 18 months that's going to mean we're going to be in a better position 12 months from now. I just don't, I don't see a short-term borrowing improving our situation. Um, if we go down this list, there's a lot of wants as opposed to absolutely have to have needs. So if the library HVAC system is a absolute have to have need, well then other things that are wants might have to wait. Um, that's just my opinion. So I was asking you, what's what's on your kick it out list? It's Jim. Um, yeah, Ron. So I guess Adam, my question is. Your belief is that if we don't have the cash to pay for it, we shouldn't do it. I mean, we built the fire station without having to go to an override out of this capital debt stabilization plan, built a police station, $10 million in school renovations. But so you believe only large projects should be bonded under the capital stabilization plan? That is my opinion, and it was also the opinion of the financial advisor that we spoke to 12 months ago. Well, I, I, was, I wasn't there for that, but my understanding from having worked closely with Michael Milanowski in the development of this plan was that the idea is that you maintain a level of debt, things come on, things drop off, and as long as you're maintaining that, then you can respond to something short-term like this. I mean, we're talking about this being paid off possibly next year. We're done with it at that point. So, and, and, and the other problem with the library is, and, and the, you know, when the light bulb finally went off, you kick this down the road for another year. I mean, if we approve it this year, it's not relief in 2023. It's relief in 2024, because you can't even go out to bid and get, the, to, get to work on it in the summer of 2020, 2022. So it's 2023, rather. So if you kick it down another year, it's, it's two years out before there's any relief over there. So relative to the urgency to do it, do the library now. And... You know, you may remember that originally uh, the HVAC was going to get done five years ago when we were going to add the COA to the, uh, as an addition to the library. That never happened, but we, we realized five years ago that we had an issue over there. So in terms of urgency, I don't think there's any question that the library needs to get done. But I guess we just have a philosophical difference that um, borrowing, as long as it is, is, it is within the scope of the plan of the capital debt stabilization fund, it's okay as long as our financial team feels that it can be managed. And, you know, and again, I mean, it's been a long history in the Capital Outlay Committee where year to year things change and you have to adapt. I mean, Pat will remember a story where I, he, he came into a school committee meeting and as I walked past him, I said, by the way, you're not getting the four buses this year because things changed. And he hasn't let me forget that. But um, so I guess it's maybe just a philosophical difference that, uh, as long, I feel, I, I, I don't care if it's a large project like a police station or a fire station or something, you know, smaller like this HVAC, um, if, it's, if, it's con if it can be contained within the plan that we have, then I don't think it's, uh, you know, overspending or spending beyond our means. It's implementing the capital stabilization plan that Michael Milanowski put into place. Well, actually, it started under Rick LaFond, and Michael just sort of put it on steroids a little bit by adding retiring debt into the capital stabilization plan. So, you know, I mean, as I look over the numbers, it seems that we can accommodate this. We can adapt to it next year when necessary. And, uh, you know, and, and again, that's not to say two years from now, something else doesn't break in town that we're going to have to shuffle things around with. But... You know, they, they we're coming up on seven years now that we've been waiting to replace the HVAC. We've realized there's a problem with the HVAC system. So I think this is, you know, since we didn't place an urgency on it before, it's now taken its position at the top of the, uh, top of the need. We've got a, a plan to deal with it, and we recognize there may be consequences in the next couple of years that we have to adapt to. But again, when we're faced with something like this, I think we have to try to accommodate it the best we can. The financial team seems to feel that we can accommodate it this year, 
And we know we may have our work cut out for us next year, and maybe someone isn't going to get something they need. But that's the nature of the whole capital stabilization uh, program. So just my thoughts. And I, I just have one other caveat I want to add, too, is that I believe by the end of FY24, we still have to spend the ARPA money. Am I correct? So and that's over $2 million that we have not earmarked to any project yet. So and I do know when I looked and Sue as well, the town of Plymouth was um, doing radio towers and HVAC. So and fire stations. Yeah, so maybe some of the select board could vote. To, some of that money could be put towards these projects next year. But there is, I said, two point four million or two million for ACPA. So one point seven million. So there is one point seven million for our town for ACPA money. I guess my only concern is that we continually increasing our debt year over year. Or is it, like you said, we're paying it off and it's stable. And we have a kind of a range of where we want to keep it. But if it's continually going up because we keep borrowing, then I think one of the things I get from Adam that that's a concern. Mm -hmm. um, so we would need, you know, we have a, a, a range that we like to keep our debt at. Then that's, you know, that that would be okay. But. It seems like we're bar are we borrowing more every year over year uh, and increasing our debt. If, if, I think if, we're, if I was looking at an FY24 number that was predictably retain attainable and not at a significant deficit, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be arguing the same point, right? Mm -hmm. Because the expectation is that we could potentially pay it off next year and still meet the capital demands of next year. But I, I see very little difference between a six a seven hundred thousand dollar deficit this year and what's probably gonna be at least a million or two million dollars next year. I, I just don't see a big difference between the two issues except once one twelve months later. Um, and again, we <clears throat> I, I totally understand where you're coming from, Ron, with respect to maintaining a certain debt level and, and all that sort of stuff. This is in addition to our existing debt. And I you know I know when we went through the analysis and the process of borrowing for the high school athletic complex, we didn't just borrow for the high school athletic complex. We added things to that to get that dollar amount to a certain point where it made sense to go out and borrow because it didn't make sense to borrow at a low number. Um, and, and again, having sat in the room, it was Alan and I, uh, with the financial team last year that the financial advisor said, yes, this doesn't make sense. And I, again, I don't, to me, borrowing $700,000 that you don't have just shows that you're not effectively managing your capital. See, and, that, and that's where we're in disagreement, sure. because I think if you look over, if you look at where we're going to, uh, year over year over year, things are going to be dropping off our debt. In five years, things will drop off, and by then, we'll be done paying this loan, right? No, so, no, hopefully we'll pay it off next year. But hopefully, but with a $3 sure. million deficit, it's somewhat unpredictable. I mean, I, I think there's a, a lower likelihood, it's less likely than it is likely, that we're going to have the money to pay off this debt next year when we have a three $3 million delta right now. $3 million. It's not like 500000 and I'd say, yeah, we could probably come up with it. But, but we're, again, we're again, we have one of the highest uh, bond ratings in the area. For a reason. For a reason. And the financial team tells us that we can do this without threatening that. The financial team last year said the opposite. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there for last I mean, year's I know, financial I'm not, team. I'm not lying. So, so to suggest that that's not true would be... Well, I, I don't know. But, but fine. But I could probably bring a financial team in that would say the opposite. You know, i got to be honest with you. I, I think the only thing that changed was the interest rate. The higher number you borrowed, the better the rate was. So from a standpoint of lower borrowing interest rates, then a higher balance made sense. But there's never... I don't recall anything about don't make it less than five million. It's a waste of time. And as far as your $3 million delta next year, the purchase of a used tower truck for $1 million is in the FY24. So we're going to have to tell Chief Weston no if... He already knows it's a no. I'm just it's saying. A, it's a, it's, it, if it rains on Thursday in a snowstorm, it might happen. He knows better. It, it's, that's one of the $3 million. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I, I do know on the list, this list, I'm just sort of looking down it now, um, Chief Weston had mentioned to me that the 288000 for the radio, for the, the third part of that, could probably be pushed out to FY25. You're not going to do a second brush breaker in the same year. 460 for the culinary classroom. Yep. Like, I know, there's a lot of stuff in that there that can also get pushed. I just Scott's trying to get a grant for the culinary crafts classroom. 
So there's a lot of stuff that happens in the next 12 months that's not etched in stone here. The bottom line is simple. We have a capital project that they've worked their fanny off on to get it to put together again. They have come up with a plan to do the HVAC in the library, as I believe was promised. So we can beat this horse to death, but the Capital Outlay Committee has come back with a recommendation. We, we all have opinions, and they don't all have to be the same. That's fine. So now it's our choice to support their decision or not, and then take that to the select board where they'll support it or not, and then town meeting where town meeting can support it or not. But we'll have done our job. Again, Mr. Chairman, I, I guess I just want to say to me, if our financial team now is telling us that we can do this with, and, it, and it's not breaking out of uh, the plan that we've had, which has been a brilliant plan, other towns, uh, the, the infrastructure we've been able to maintain in this town over the last seven years, no town around can touch us That's in correct. terms of how we've been maintaining our infrastructure. And uh, I mean, I was on capital outlay for over 25 years. And, and it's a constant, what, what do we have available and what can we do, what are the priorities? The, you, you know, it's, it's nice if we can meet every single one of these over the next 10 years, but a 10 year plan, there's gonna be stuff popping up in here that hasn't even been contemplated in any given year. And you have to be able to respond to it when it does. In the meantime, this plan, as I say, has been able to fund three major projects in town. We're, t we're, t we're, we're talking about, yeah, we're recognizing that this wasn't in the plan, you know, it should have been, but we've kicked it and kicked it and kicked it. So now, if we have to be uh, have have to be discrimi more discriminating next year than we'd like to be, uh, in order to make sure we break even, then that's what we're going to have to do. Wouldn't be the first time. Uh, in order to make sure that this, which is now, maybe could have been dealt with by setting aside a few dollars over the last five or six years. Now has to be dealt with now, and next year we'll have to deal with, the, with the whatever we're faced with. And again, we already know that we've. It sounds like we've already gotten maybe a million five of the three million addressed, uh, and then who knows what free cash comes in at. So, um, but I, I think it's within the spirit of what it was intended with this plan. I, I worked with Michael when he was developing this, uh, and looking over the numbers, I think it's within the philosophy that the uh, plan was established for. And there'd be no half a million dollar library mechanical replacement. It's, that's what comes out to pay the bond off, the short term borrower. It's, it's going to cost $500,000 for a year? No, to pay off the bond next year, to pay off the borrower oh, loan next right. year, it's going to be 850000 not five. Right. So the number goes up three and a, three, 350000 but if that, you want that's to pay why it it's off. in there. Is theoretically, the mm -hmm. concept is: do we have enough money to pay off? This well, I mean, you year? originally said wait till next year when we have all the money to pay for it. So I said wait till next year until we have the money to pay for whatever it is we put off till next year. I have never, at one point, advocated for one thing over another. I thought you were you, you. I thought your initial comment was: let's not do the library this year. Let's wait till next year when we have the money for all to pay if, all of it. If we don't, so at the time we had $1.7 million to spend, and the library was going to eat up all of that. Mm -hmm. At the time, that's what we were talking about. Right. A lot's changed since we had that discussion. So at the time, if you were saying, we, we have 20 things we can do or one thing we can do, I was advocating for the 20, not the one. And But I, I'm not saying that the library shouldn't get done. I've, I, I've never said that under no circumstances should the library get done. To, to me, it's about prioritizing what's most important. When you look at this So list, if it was your call tonight, if, if you were making the decision tonight, is would you be moving forward with the library or not, based on everything you know? It, it, that's not relevant to no, the No, no, I'm interested to know whether you place I, it at the priority I, that everyone else does. I cannot tell or you that. Or that I do. So I personally cannot tell you that answer right now because I don't have the context for everything else that's on this list. And to, to be able to tell you whether everything else on this list is as important as the library project. If the library project is an absolute must get done, then maybe other things on this list are not that severe. They're not that necessary That's what right I asked now. You. What do you want to knock off? I don't have the context. Well, it's too late to decide, no, Adam. We're running out of time. Alan, you want to put me on the spot, and you want me to single people out, and you want me, you want me to expose myself. I don't. I'm not going to because I'm not Mr. Know-it-all. I don't have all the answers, and I can't tell you everything on this list and whether it is <clears> as <throat> sensitive or urgent as the library. I okay. can't, and I'm not going to do that. That's fine. So, but, but I think when you have a budget, those are the difficult decisions you have to make. But again, well, and, and again, we're, we're just saying the same thing over and over again. Borrowing within a budget is fine if it's done intelligently and strategically. And I think that's what we're doing with this. 
You, uh, if, if you're going to say that every year we can only buy what we can afford in t with cash, without any borrowing, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people over the next 10 years that aren't going to get what they want. That's right. And that's where, from my experience, sometimes things push their way to the top that you just can't say no to anymore, and you have to find a creative way to deal with it and then deal with the consequences. Again, the chief doesn't get, the fire chief doesn't get a truck maybe for a year or two, uh, and that's one of the consequences because we missed something along the way or something came up. Again, I can't tell you the number of times no one contemplated something breaking that had to be dealt with immediately. So... Yeah, we just haven't, in my experience, in the last, I don't know, however long, eight, nine years, we haven't borrowed a dollar amount like this. Every other project we've borrowed for has been a large project. And well, so, we, yes, what, right. what, we, I, what I am, that is essentially what I'm at the... And I'd say if we were doing this every year, I'd agree with you, but we're not. This is a one-time solution for a very, uh, a very urgent situation. I, if we started doing this every year, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go along with it. But I think we've come up with a solution to deal with something that, um, again, this goes back to 2015. Well, the HVA system got kicked in the library because the plan was to add on to the back of the library. We were going to bond money then to put the addition on for the Council on Aging, which then would have ripped the entire roof off the library because it would need a new one anyway. And then we would have done all the HVAC and the mechanicals. So it was all going to be rolled into one big ball. And then when that never happened, then that got kicked down the road. Then the standalone project was still being looked at from, it was Dave that came up with the new idea to put 14 units in. Because prior to this, two years ago, they were still talking about cutting holes in that roof and taking all those units out through the roof and then having to put the plywood and the sheathing back and then re-roof the roof. And that was going to be all kinds of crazy money. And then you still have a system you could never fix because you'd be putting it back in the vault. So it was, it was the new technology that came out that now allows this to be wall-hung units, exposed, using some existing ductwork, but a system that we can repair going down the road. And it's going to be 14 units, I think he yes. said. 14 separate units. So, you know, this is, this is technology's evolved, but this needs to get done now. Pat. I think that... Um, <clears throat> You know, any of these arguments for and against can be made any year you want. Sure. Last year, this year, next year, and the following years. What we have is a knowledgeable group in the Finance Committee that came up with a very good plan, capital plan. We have our financial team that says it's doable. Let's do it. And I think... I don't have all the history because I haven't been on this committee very long, but I think we must have done something similar around $2 million about 10 years ago, or probably in 2016, because the fire trucks are going to be falling off in 27, and they they're were about... a million and a half. They were a million and a half, because they're 175000 or so a year, and they're coming off in 27. So that project, whatever we bonded then, it must have been around $2 million. We did the fire trucks. John was the chairman of the finance committee. We did the fire station. Did we do a separate bond for the fire trucks? But was that because other, another, other bonds? Because my understanding was the, the fire station and all the money needed for the fire station was because existing debt was coming off of the books. And so it was freeing up, it was freeing up debt service that was previously bonded and those funds were used to buy the fire station. So I guess what I'm asking is, theoretically, was a portion of what was bonded for the fire station also used to buy the fire trucks? No, it's a separate bond, I believe. I think it was two different time frames. I think they were. Yeah, the fire trucks would be paid off sooner than the building. Yeah, I think it was a different, like theoretically, the fire trucks were bonded over 10 years, but the building was bonded over 20, right? Something like so that. So now the fire trucks are coming up, but the, that, that debt service was the debt service that became available to, to do the fire station and the fire trucks all at the same time. They just, they, there was 1.5 million of it that instead of going into the building, went to the fire trucks and bonded over a 10 year period. <laughs> Sue, do you, um, on a different topic, do you, do you know, or, and Bob, do you know um, what the outcome was of the discussion with North Cabo Water District about why they still needed the money? They're having a meeting tonight downstairs. 
No. Did you hear anything? Okay. So they were discussing it tonight, I think, on the meeting. But I don't know. I'm sorry. One. Well, I'd be surprised if they still need the money, given the fact they didn't know they had it to begin with. Did you say they're coming up here tonight? Did somebody say that earlier? I don't think well, so. No, the previous so meeting, when we I met at the police invited. station, yeah. when we met at the police station, we had asked to have to talk to Kevin to see if they would come to this meeting so that we could have the discussion with them about the $198,000 that they're using out of free cash. Because, it, again, that's, that's another $200,000 mm -hmm. that we'd have access to for, for these projects. If they didn't need it. I can run down and ask them, see if they're still down there. I think it puts him on the spot if he's not prepared to do the homework on it. Can you get with him, please, Bob? And so, mm -hmm. yep. maybe we can have a, you know, short discussion just before the uh, select board joint meeting. So we get an idea on it. I mean, I don't want to put them on the spot on town meeting floor, but I'm not too inclined to let them keep a half a million dollars in their checkbook while they take money out of us. Yeah. There's no reason for them to yeah. take money out of us if they've got it. I don't mind paying their bills when they don't have it, but mm -hmm. they have it. Yeah. And if yeah, they want to hang on just to keep a cushion, <clears throat> that's, you know, so do we want to take make a motion to support the capital outlay or do we want to make a motion to support the article with the capital outlay sits in and send that to the select board or we could do both what were the choices we can either support the capital outlay for their plan recommend the capital outlay. recommend that plan but then we can roll it right into also recommending what's in the warrant, which I believe is the capital improvement budget, Article 4. So in either way, we've got to, we can do a double vote or a single vote or two-thirds vote required, select board, FinCom, and capital outlay committee. So we can do everything on the warrant if that's the way you want to do it. Whatever's a pleasure of the board. Um, same with, with you, Beth. You need to... Mm -hmm. Whatever the pleasure of your board is. Hold on a sec. I just want to make sure. This I, was I done don't... today, so I'm assuming that this is correct. When well, we get to 3655 yeah. five from 3362. Three, Huh? So there's something on the the town warrant for um, you town wide capital network for twenty seven thousand five ninety five. In the town line maintenance contract, eighty thousand seven sixty seven. Those were both part of that joint um, the joint cost between the school and the town, and then we separated out I think it was like hundred and seventy three thousand that was um, going to be paid for out of just regular revenue and not jointly. So there was still some cost in there um, for leasing of the copiers throughout the town and certain little things like that that's out of those. But that's that's in the capital. It's, it's in the capital. So we the capital is really three million six fifty five instead of three million three sixty two. Because we approved three million three sixty two. That throws the numbers all over the place. There's something else in there. Is that eighty five? Is that all that's missing out of this? Nope. Is that um, townwide capital implementation oversight and maintenance contract? Nope, something else. It has to be. It's nowhere near enough money. Mm -hmm. 
The annual reduction in debt exclusion for the new elementary school solar, 100000 Which one are you saying, Beth? Is it included? There's, is some, there's something extra here. on the warrant. U and V, and it looks like... Those are down below as part of existing capital projects. Okay. Yeah, but they're, now they're up here. So they, they're right, not... But if you take the 27, the 85, the 80, and the 100, yeah. is that that's it? the difference between the 33626 and the 3655962. Yeah. If you add 27, 85, 80, and 100 together... It equals $293,362,000, or $293,362. Yep, two ninety three. dollars Which is the right. difference between the two numbers. Okay. All right, so it is here. It's just so it is here. Locations. It's just from existing yes. capital. Right. Okay. So it balances. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure. She Thank you. This amount below the line, so it doesn't All right, so what's the pleasure? Do we want to do separate votes? I think I'd like to see a motion for the FinCom to support the capital outlays proposal, and then we'll go to the warrant out of it. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded to support the capital outlays plan as presented tonight. I guess I think it was plan option four. Is option that right? Four. Option four. Option four as presented tonight. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Should I abstain on that? Can I just ask? Um, yeah. Well, because I'm going to vote on cap. Okay, yeah, I'm going to abstain. Capital. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got um, six yes, one no, one abstention. And then we also need to vote on the same article. Uh, I don't think you guys need nope. to vote when it gets to the warrant. Oh, sorry. sorry. So we can take that next if you want while we, we're right on it. So but I think that's the end of, of capital outlays input. Am I correct? It is. Yeah. I just had a quick question on the mm -hmm. informational summary. It says the uh, 1.6 million is appropriated and we're going to borrow. So that have to get changed to 1.8. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, we don't know. Well, it's going to be one one point eight on the outside, right? Yeah. Because we don't have that as a contractual number yet. Yeah, cause I, in the article itself, we put to see if the town will vote to appropriate one point eight or another sum of money. Ah, uh, another back. So I just yeah. probably just okay. a, so that one point six needs to be changed. Mm -hmm. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. I bet you want to take that um, take that article up with your committee, and you can vote on it now on Article Four. Make a motion to approve Article 4 for the annual town water. Um, yeah, you can second even. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I second that. <coughs> okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. One abstention. Abstain. Um, 201. Two, two two one zero. Sorry. 201. Two zero. Two zero. Two zero. Two zero. That's right. Zero. Did you abstain because of a library trustee? I'm a library trustee. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that was clarified. Just you know, I figured that was the case. Um, all right, so that takes care of that. Do you want to? You're more than welcome to stay, um, unless you prefer to adjourn your committee and you can rejoin the fin. Would you guys like to adjourn? And you guys are welcome to stay. That's all we have to do. Yeah, that's all we have to do. We have still have to do our minutes and everything tells us. Oh, yeah, we still had, we do have minutes we wanted to approve tonight. Go ahead. Okay. We have to keep. And then we can go. I'll approve the minutes from March 3rd, 2022. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, three Aye. to Aye. zero. Okay. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the March 7, 2022 meeting. Second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. And then you got the change for 316. 
Yes, I will change the word okay. earmark. I'll make yep. a motion to approve the minutes with the edit okay. for March 16th. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Abstain. Okay. Let me the second. Oh, second? Second. Okay. Okay. In the week. Do we have a next meeting date? Or we... we don't. Want, I think we should keep that as a, our next meeting day is to be determined right okay. now. Is that okay? Well, you'll be at the April 5th. You'll be at the April 5th. Marie, you should probably come to the April okay. 5th select board joint meeting. Yeah. All right, so April 5th at the joint meeting. Oh, yeah. I'll be oh you won't be there? I'll be out of town. So we won't have a quorum. No, but that's, you can, you can still, still let Marie come so okay. she knows what's going on. So it won't be an official meeting. Okay. And also, before you leave, I was going to mention this anyhow. Um, I, I think I forwarded everybody on this committee the invite from Mary Ross. Um, Mary Ross is having the playground cameras are done, and they're having a peekaboo look-see um, on April 5th at 530 at the police station for anybody that wants to go see how the new technology is all connected and everything else. Mary Ross invited us. Yeah, and I'll I, forward on that. I know I forwarded that email, but I wanted to remind everyone. I wanted to let you know about it. The meeting with the selectmen, what time is that? Um, Mr. Fennessy, do you know? Is it? Is it six? Six. Okay. Six. Yeah. On the fifth, right? Yeah. Yes. I just wanted to um, just quickly say uh, that hopefully everybody just keeps Shane in their prayers and thoughts as we uh, continue this battle. And I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Adjourned. And 7.32 p.m. Thank you. And just before you guys leave, you said Shane, so I, I with Walter here. Um, I understand that um, there's a couple of contractors that are going to provide a ramp completely installed at no cost to the family uh, for when Shane comes home. So uh, two local contractors are doing that and uh, tried to actually get a little contribution and they wouldn't hear it. It's so, so strictly them. So. They were very firm on that. We are doing this. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, that was exactly how it was put to me. We were talking about it, and uh, well, I'll just tell you, it's, it's Peter Opachinski from SLT, and it's, um, um, Buzz. Buzz Atriano. And Peter Opachinski called up Buzz, and he says, we're doing this. That's it. I'll send you a bill. <laughs> we're doing this. And that, that's the bottom line. So and I said, well, I'd like to contribute. Nope. This is all on us. Awesome. So it's a big deal. Very nice. Um, it's, 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 just, it's a big deal. So much appreciated. And it, it looks like it might happen sooner than we do. Geez, I hope it's so. It would be so great to have him come home. I'm sure he's itching for his own bed, too. He's been able to get out a little bit. Oh, really? Good. Get some fresh air. He'd be like Dorothy, clicking his heels. <laughs> There's no place like home. <laughs> lifted his spirits quite a bit. Good, good. Good for him. That's awesome. He'd still be going in and out. But He's a fighter. A lot of people praying for him. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. You don't have to stay. Thanks, guys. All right, our next uh, agenda item, uh, discussion of the warrant articles. Can we open up our um, warrant to ex uh, Article 2? We had tabled this the last time because it was not populated. There were no numbers. Any discussion? And then I'll take a motion. <clears throat> Do we want to discuss after the motion, too, or? 
we can discuss before or after. It doesn't matter. You can make the motion for discussion, and we can take it from there. Are we going to vote on this without knowing about the uh, North Carver Water District? This was the table to the next FinCom, so it had it had the numbers in it from the last meeting, but it was tabled because of that very question. I believe that's the reason we tabled it, because North Cobb is up in the air. Right. So this can be one of those that we deal with just before town meeting when we get an answer out of North Cobb. You have to. Want to continue to table it? Yes. I need a motion. Motion to table. Article Second. 2. Yep. Second. Motion to table Article 2 has been seconded. Any further discussion? All those in uh, Just ask a quick question. Good. Um, this is not a big deal, just procedurally. Um, I noticed that, like, as it relates to the free cash article, we certified free cash at a much higher number, right? At 3.2 or whatever the number was. But we're only showing 1 million here, and that's because we took the, the delta and applied it to capital improvements, right? Um, is that sort of how it's normally done? Or, and I ask only because in the past, Beth and I were talking about this after the last meeting, but like in the past, if we were paying for cap, for capital items out of free cash, we listed those under the free cash article so that this free cash article would tie back to whatever the certified free cash number was, right? For future reference and, and that sort of stuff. So I don't mind if it's presented this way. I just was sort of wondering why we had switched it. It's 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 okay. It's just like next year, if I, if I look at the numbers, I'm gonna think free cash was certified at a million dollars for, for 10 years from now. I mean, think that the free cash was certified at a million dollars as opposed to 3.2 because we automatically took that extra money and moved it over to the capital improvement budget. I just didn't know what the thought process was. And my thought process is just was this, these are the items that were always paid for out of free cash. The money came in a lot higher than we expected. The best thing to do because we needed the radios in the library and the siding on the town hall was to shift that money agreed with, um, with Bob so that you guys had more. So. I know Meg had a worksheet. It goes out 10 years. So I took that original $3.6 million that she had put on the worksheet for this FY23, backed out the debt, gave you guys what was left, and then added the free cash and the closed articles to that to make what's available to you. It could be presented differently, but again, my first time at this rodeo, yeah. I, I, I don't mind input on how things would like to, people would like to see it look differently to make it understandable to everybody. I just didn't know if it was done this way because this is the right way to do it or if it's just a different way of doing it, right? And then that's sort of what the, the catalyst is behind the question. I don't, you know, it's, I guess it's sort of apples and oranges. It doesn't really matter. I just didn't know if there was a reason why we did it this way this year as opposed to the way we did it before. I just didn't know. In the beginning, I did not have these worksheets and the worksheet on how you work out your revenues and expenditures. So that's when Ron, um, I almost said Ron Clark, Ron Griffin and I got together and said, well, this is what our revenues are. This is what this chart says that goes to capital, but part of it pays for debt. So we kind of just worked it out so that everything that was listed on those worksheets were there once we found those particular worksheets. And like, oh, okay, everything we've got here on our couple of worksheets that I sent you goes back to the elongated 10-year <clears> forecast. <throat> But this is just for one year. So in essence, you could have put item I could have been two capital purchases and had that be a number so that the bottom line, instead of it being a million sixty-four, would have been the total between the two. Right. Well, I understand what he what, what Adam's saying, so that like he said, ten years from now when you go back and look, you it, it does, would give the impression we only had a million dollars in free cash that year without like this year looking farther into it. Like this year we put the radio infrastructure in with capital. Mm -hmm. Like last year was mm -hmm. listed as a free cash item. Right. right. Just because we were using yeah. free cash to also pay for that particular line item. It's just a different way of doing it. I just want to make sure there wasn't like a, yeah. a right and wrong and it was just a matter of preference. So I think it's yeah. a good suggestion yeah. maybe to add make the last item in there. Anything transferring over to the capital, capital budget is listed there and then what you're giving at the bottom is the total free cash number. Well, we certainly can make that adjustment yeah. right now and request it. This is the warrant's not printed yet. We're approving this tonight, so. So, I mean, do I do you want me to just list available for capital from free cash with the total dollar amount? 
So but am I correct? Leave, but leave your Article 4 alone. All right, leave Article, article 4 okay. alone. Mm -hmm. Take the $3.6 million mm -hmm. and add that as item I. Yep. Maybe in bold to show that we're not double dipping here, but this is money that's transferred to the capital plan. Okay. So that the, the bottom line at the will be the correct number. It's the 2147 yeah. 735. You, am I, am, is that what you're at? Is that what you mean? That's yeah. Yes. I think that's the, I think that would be yeah. an easier way to do it. And, and doing it that way is easier than listing out the individual items because the individual items might might not equal two one four seven. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. So you know, th this way here, five years from now, eight years from now, when it's an entirely new FinCom and they want to go back and see what the hell we did in 2022, 23, they can look at the front page of the warrant and the mm -hmm. numbers right there instead of having to go dig for it. So, okay. um, I would take that as an. I'm, I'm, I'm Mr. Fennessy. So I just want to make one comment. Adam's right. You're going to see this throughout the next year, maybe, depending, um, where two new people come in and do things differently than what. And and nothing was done wrong. Nothing's done wrong now. It's just a different way of doing it. Uh, to present certain things so so you're right and you're gonna see that and, you, and the way to address it is the question that's on it yep. so that we can then go back and get what you guys want you know so so there's a motion um, to accept article 2 it's been seconded I'd like the amendment to that motion we, we don't have to table it now do we already made the motion to table because of the I'm sorry you are correct that's right Two. So we can table it and so, add I for the next meeting. Yeah. Um, but that's right before town meeting, right? We can add I and then table it. So at, the, at least that vote's out of the way. Yep. So withdraw the motion to table for a moment, please. Who made it? Did you. I make it? <laughs> I thought Pat made it. You made it. <laughs> no, you did. No, you made it. I did. The big guy made it. It's what happens when you retire and stare at your phone too much. I need a motion to add an item I in the amount of the transferred money that's going into the capital improvement budget as discussed. Anyone? So moved. Second. All right. So there's a motion made and seconded to create an item I in this case, but it would be the last item in whatever the future lists are that shows the transfer of funds over to the capital side. Do I have that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now we'll take a motion to table the balance motion of this the pending the outcome of North Carver Water District. Second. Motion made and, to, and seconded to table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So we've got an <clears throat> when we meet next time, can we reject that amount if they don't have a substantial reason for needing it? It's all the town money, so we can try. <laughs> I don't know if we'll get very far. It you looks mean, like you mean reject the North Cabo Water District? Time. Just the amount, we, just we, that one amount. Yes, yes, we can not recommend that. We can not recommend that. All right, we've already voted on. The next one, Article 4 is Capital Improvement Budget. Um, so I'll take a motion for that. So move. Second. Second. Motion made and seconded to recommend to the select board the, and, for, and put on a warrant. Um, Article 4, any further discussion? Uh, that needs to include the changes in the back to 1.8 as well. Because it's kind of, the front says 1.8 and the back says 1.6. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's a summary. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. I'm going to abstain. 611. Six, one, one. Okay. Article 6. What do we need to know about this? Why did we not vote on that? Oh, so this is populated now. Okay. 
Okay, Article 6 is now, Article 6 and this was the former Article 7. I believe so. And it was all zero, so it was, that's right, so it was tabled. Want to give us a rundown on this? I don't know much about it because sure. I haven't met with the CPC committee. Um, but they gave this article to um, <clears throat> Elaine to put in for them. And the only amounts that I gave to Elaine were the amounts for the um, administrative expenses and the estimated revenues reserved for open space housing and historic. which is 10% of what their estimated revenues are that you have to put in there. But I don't, I ha did not attend any of their meetings, nor th did I know that they had any, because they <coughs> could actually put more of those reserves away than just the 10%, which they do have. So this is just basic 10%, and within the next year, I'll make sure I, you know, get in contact with them and, and find out exactly what they want to do further with this. So the balance, the other 70%, theoretically, will just be off to the side until they decide, like, a... If they want to do a specific project in historical, yeah, and they, they, they would have to go to, to that project. They would have to go to town meeting again to get it revoted. Otherwise, it just gets recertified at the end of the year. Okay. So community preservation voted six one one. They're actually building a house. The habitat for humanity. Do we want to table this? Do we have a little more information, or do we feel we have enough to go with this? I mean, it, my opinion, it, it looks like they're just doing the bare minimum of what they need to do to satisfy the CPC, the, the Community Preservation Act, and allocating at least 10% to each, mm. each one. That's what it looks like, based on the info, which I think is fairly standard if they don't have a large project to allocate it to. Uh, do we have to have, like, uh, debt service for existing projects that they're paying for in here? Like the debt payment every year? Maybe we should until we get clarity on that. I, like, I wonder if in the past when we had, they, like they borrowed money for the high school project, mm -hmm. um, are those payments supposed to be captured in here on an annual basis? They are. So I'll look into that. So we'll need to get that. All right, so let's get a motion to table. Motion to table, Article 6. Second. Motion to table, Article 6, made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? Table. That's it for the warrant, isn't it? Oh, Article 7. Collect. No, that's not us. Okay, so that's that. <coughs> Discussion and comment of Article and Carver Reporter. I want to caution everyone. Um, I included that only because, and, and only because, I thought it was a hit piece, and I thought it was questionable journalism at best that the, the reporter did not see fit to reach out to anyone, whether it was administration, um, anyone on the FinCom, anyone. Just took the piece and she wrote the article. Um, so I wanted it mentioned. I wanted a copy of it given to everybody. Um, it was certainly not flattering especially for us. I don't like the fact that it actually mentioned um, Sue by name, and it didn't give anyone a chance to rebut anything. So I was not happy. Pat? I'd just like to <clears throat> compound on that a little bit. It's, I don't know, you know, what, what kind of reporter writes something like that or what kind of a newspaper publishes something like that when you've got basic principles of journalism that weren't followed such as multiple sources, corroboration, and getting a point of view from the other side. It was a one-sided hit piece, made the front page. We don't need this. We don't need it at all. I'm very, very disappointed. It's unconscionable what they did. I have to agree with you, Pat. I think it was absolutely wrong. I have no problem with people writing stuff in a newspaper article or putting stuff online. If there's truth to it or you've got something to back it up, you've got corroboration. 
this was just another person's opinion based on what their perception was of a former FinCon meeting. And I just, you know, I agree with you. This, 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 this is not what we do. So let's move on to the minutes. Anybody else on the reporter story? I sent them this morning, and we've got three stacks of minutes here, the 17th, the 24th, the 28th. I just got the other two latest ones a couple of days ago, and I haven't had a chance to go through them yet, so we'll deal with those net later. But at least we'll have three sets to look at tonight. Has everybody read them? And I'll take a motion when you're ready on February 17th. Make a motion to accept the minutes as written. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as written for February 17th. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 8 0. Is that right? Everybody was here? Yeah, nobody was there. Good. February 24th. <clears throat> Make a motion to accept the minutes from February 24th, 2021. Second. 22. I'm sorry. This says 21, so hold on a sec. It does say 21. Uh, sorry. We need, to, we, we need to correct that. Sorry, I'm reading it. Surprised oh. I didn't catch it. The I'll make a motion. 20. The other one says 21 also. Oh, what do it? Oh, I was looking at the, the gym. You must be using old letterhead or something. <laughs> Well, the, the agenda actually says 2021 for the 17th. Huh? No, that's 22. Oh, mine. Mine says March 28th, 2022. No. I'm looking at February 7th. You're looking at You're March. just looking at the one from... I'm looking at tonight's. Yeah. I'm looking at the one we were looking at, February 17th. 2021. It does say that. Thank you. You're right. It was wrong that night on the original agenda. I, I print out whatever gets sent me to me, too. and that's what I bring. So it's so. operator error. It's Take a motion. Uh, there's a motion on the floor <laughs> for February 24, 2022, as corrected. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I think we, to be technical, we have to do the same thing for February 17th, since that also says. 21. You go to yes. make a motion to accept the minutes of February 17th, 2022, as amended. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of February 17th, 2022, as amended. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Now this one's right. Thank, Thank you. It's right. February 28th. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of February 28th, 2022, as written. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the minutes of, two thousand, of uh, February 28, 2022, as written. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good to go. Okay. I have no topics. Anyone? Comments? Next meeting is at the um, April 5th. Town meeting, of course, is 6 p.m. in the high school library. We're probably going to, town meeting is at 7 p.m. We're probably going to have a 6.30, 20 minutes past 6 meeting prior to that. So we'll firm that up at the next select board meeting. Um, otherwise, we'll see you on April 5th, select board, 6 p.m. I think that's it. Anybody else? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We're out. Thank you. Thank you.